Okay, this is take one, part one of my new lock picking series. This uh, lock picking is a sport. Uh, it's known worldwide. It's become a hobby of a lot of uh, technicians like myself or retired mechanics, uh, young people, all, all sorts. But anyway, without any further ado, again, this is part one of the uh, lock picking series where I teach myself to learn how to pick on pick locks and you guys are invited to come along what I'm going to be working on today is this uh, this regular uh, tumble lock um, you'll probably a lot of master locks are like this uh, lower quality locks lower price locks that have a, a security flaw and that is that their 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 keyway right here their cylinder has a lot of slop in it I'm going to show you what I mean by that when I put this this torque to t torque t tensioning tool inside you'll see see the uh, cylinder has quite a bit of free movement right there uh, I don't know if you can see that let me make sure I get the camera around so you can get a good shot of that view right there I want to make sure you can see that cylinder right there see that movement on that cylinder well that allows you to when you push you put it insert your picking tool in there and you push against those pins it allows those pins to be pried or forced against the sidewall of that little cylinder that they or hole they go into and um, and so then you can catch them and trap them but that's what we're not going to be doing today we're going to actually be um, we're going to be raking it uh, it's a term that I'm going to be used from time to time. You'll have to pick up on these things as we go through these series. I just want to move along and do the first demonstration here. If you can pick this lock, you can pick quite a few locks. So if you get to the point where you get good on this one, you can gain some confidence and know that you could you could pick quite a few locks out there uh, that you can get at Home Depot or any of those other places, you know, uh, where you get a 3 or $4 lock or 4 or $5 lock, you could probably have a good chance of opening them. That's what I've been finding out anyway. So what I'm going to be using today, I'm going to be using a torque tool that has um, a pretty long stem on it. And it also uh, has, uh, it's a little wider. And the reason I am is because thickness, in other words, up there of the shank itself. I'm going to, uh, I need that for the width of this hole because I, otherwise I'd have too much slop in there. It's a, I have been working on this, training on this lock for quite a, for a couple of weeks now. And I've just practically worn it out because I hadn't... Uh, I was, I was trying to perfect the tensioning technique because you put too much tension on this you can you can ruin your lock you can uh, lock up pins and all kinds of different things but mainly you just have to learn that if you want it to function you know do pick right you have to learn it like a guitar string you can't hit it too hard if you want the right sound you know so what I'm going to do I'm going to go ahead and show you what I've learned so far, and that is to get your pick in straight, get it underneath, and when you, when you, after a while, you start to learn a feel for it, and you'll see, right now, all I'm doing is I'm just letting this torque wrench just hang in this lock, in this, uh, in this cylinder, keyway right here, because I want to get under these stacks of pins right there, and I just want to watch each one of them move, and you can watch them with me as I go in, you'll see how it just raises each one of those little stacks right there, and when I get to the back, I just want to just keep my I just want to keep my tool right on top of my my torque wrench and as I turn I'm gonna I, I just got a false set there I might have to reset but as I turn this works just like the notches on the key would once I put this up be up to this if you see what I'm doing here I put that up to that it looks like the key itself in its structure and as I slide that in Wiggle it around a little bit on this one. I didn't have to even, I, I ha, don't even have to put any torque. All I have to do is just act as though I had the key in and it just, it just raises the pins as I spin it around. If I put this next to the key, you would see that those ridges on that are like that, like the, the uh, key itself. Sometimes you got to wiggle it back and forth, but with this particular lock, I have learned with practice, I can just set that on top of there, keep that balance, and it'll open it right up. I'm going to do it again. Watch. I'm going to shut up so I can concentrate a little better. But I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to run it along the top of my deal. My key. This took me a long time to learn. Just, I could do this with this. 
without destroying my lock I can practice so I want to keep it right up on top of there there's a false set sometimes if I don't like the way that feels I'll just start over I don't like the way that feels that preset I might have you know I might get something bound so I'm just going to start over put it in there again I just want to run that along you notice my finger is not even touching that torque wrench right now a lot of people they would have their finger just riding all over the top of that torque wrench not with me I'm learning that you don't have to do that false set on the first one there we go there's two times let's try that again I'm, it's because I'm doing a filming that's making me uh, throw off a, a little bit I moved the I moved the camera I forgot I should have shifted my light a little there we go now I can see it a little better hope you guys can too okay here we go again we've got our piece in I've got it in I just let it hang so that I'm getting a nice rest on the bottom of the cylinder. You can't always do this now, but I just have learned with practice with this lock, this is all I need to do with this one. There we go. I'm only applying tension when I when I feel as though I've got my uh, my pins up and I can and I can get it. Look, I'm just going to keep keep going. Not try to get crazy, but show you what a little practice can do. Don't kid yourself. You can open this lock. You can open quite a few locks, man, out in the field. Sometimes, you know, I just I lose my feel. I don't like to mess around too much, but I could probably sit here and just wiggle, you know, if I was stuck somewhere and wiggle this around and get it to do my, my bidding, pull it out a little bit, but I'm not going to do that. That's what happens when I was learning. I was just fighting like that. I was going, there's got to be a better way. These guys are opening them like I'm doing when I'm really concentrating. Now, see, the reason I do, I'm letting this just come down there because I want to, I want this to, I want to get the feel for how it, how it goes in and I just riding in on those pins. And coming out, I always want to try to be smooth, going in smooth. I don't want to tear the lock up as I'm, as I'm practicing on it. I don't have a replacement pin set yet, so I don't want to tear this stuff up. But if you're forcing it, you're not doing something right. Or you can just feel it it's not it's a little little bit of catching but not real force you know look at that I mean I can just do it over and over and over because I'm not getting lucky in other words there it's technique and I'm and I'm getting it and I'm getting better with it not a hundred percent each you know I can't get it every time the same way but I'm getting much more percentage of getting it to do what I want it to do instead of having to fight it it was a false set that I wasn't even trying for there you go look at that I mean I can just do it over and over and over so that's that's not luck that's not a fluke before I was lucky when I was hitting it but not anymore see over and over and over okay that's first uh, first example if I can do it you can do it if you're interested in lock picking I'll put a list of the uh, now I'm going to show you the, uh, the uh, an example of the first set I bought. This was only about uh, 11 bucks or, or 95 on Amazon. I'll, I'll put a link below the video. But um, this is a good little practice set. I mean, there there are I, I bought one that's a little bigger, and this torque real 
wrench came with that one, which I'm glad I did, but all of some of the other picks I probably won't ever even use out of that set. But this this set has has it's a good set of picks that are the same that you will find in, in some of the better sets like Sparrow and Rock Ord and that type thing. Uh, South Ord, I mean, they uh, they have high quality picks for sure and I'm going to get a set of each one, but I wanted a good set I could practice with. I've already broken two of these, but it wasn't because the, ch the set's cheap, it's just because I didn't know what I was doing yet. And I still don't. But I am learning that uh, with practice comes, uh, you know, with perfect practice comes perfect technique. And once my technique improves, then uh, I will, you know, practice with the uh, more expensive tools. Right now, these are good enough for that and probably good enough for, you know, uh, if I had to open something, I've opened every lock in my house with it so far. <laughs> you know, every one. So I'm not complaining. I've tore up a few, got a few locks that I've uh, crippled along the way. Because I'm, I'm, I'm learning that you can't just go digging in there. you got to use some finesse like I learned and showed on this lock today. Part 1 of Lock Picking Series. Thanks a lot. Have a good day now. GoPro, stop recording.